This tutorial is for bulk handling conveyor belt engineers and technicians. It's useful not only to designers challenged with uh, designing a new conveyor system, but also operators and technicians who are confronted with belt tension related problems, such as belt slip, belt sag, or excessive radial load. It explains basic principles involved in calculating belt tensions. It introduces key terms such as effective tension, slack side tension, and total tension. And it serves as an introduction to our advanced tutorial on how to switch a single drive conveyor system to a dual drive conveyor system to solve tension related problems. This drawing shows the common components included on a typical bulk handling belt conveyor, including head pulley, snub pulley, flat belt, tail pulley, carrying idlers, return idlers, a belt plow, a counterweighted take up, belt cleaner. The drawing does not include items such as loading skirts, hopper feeder, and slider bed. The 5th, 6th, and 7th editions of the Conveyor Equipment Manufacturers Association Belt Conveyor Design Manual include several methods to calculate the belt tension required to move bulk materials on a conveyor belt. Although they're beyond the scope of this short video, these methods include historical, basic, and universal methods. We will use historical nomenclature in this short video and restrict the presentation to conveyors with standard loading conditions and continuous material flow. The SEMA Conveyor Design Manual provides this equation to calculate effective belt tension. This is the historical method of calculating TE. It consists of a variety of parameters that enables the designer to figure out how much tension the belt needs to have to overcome friction, how much tension is required to overcome gravity, and how much tension is required to overcome momentum. What are some of the components of these three types of tension? Friction components, some of the friction components consist of TBC. TBC is a tension required to overcome belt cleaner drag. This is the subject of another Romeca video. TSB, the tension required to overcome skirt board drag, also the subject of a separate video. TYR, that's the tension required to overcome friction in the bearings of the return rollers as the empty belt comes on the return strand, travels over the return strand. What are some of the gravity components? As you can see, TB, the tension required to lift or lower the conveyor belt. TM, the tension required to lift or lower material. How about the momentum component? TAM, that's the tension required to accelerate the material on the belt from the initial velocity as it hits the conveyor to the terminal velocity, which is defined as the conveyor belt speed. Once we know effective tension, then we can calculate the power required to drive the conveyor by this equation. Required power equals effective tension times belt speed, TE times V, where TE is expressed in pounds and V is expressed in feet per minute. The product of the two comes out to be feet, so many foot-pounds per minute. Well, we know that one horsepower equals 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. So once we have the product of TE and V, we can calculate horsepower simply by dividing by 33,000 or TE in pounds times V in feet per minute divided by 33,000 foot-pounds per minute per horsepower gives us our answer in horsepower. Once we have effective tension, then it's necessary to calculate other belt tension components. What are they? These are the essential belt tension components we need to concern ourselves with to properly design a conveyor belt. We described at some length how to calculate TE. Effective tension TE on an inclined conveyor when the drive is at the head, TE will be on the top strand in the vicinity of the upper pulley. The next important component 
to consider is slack side tension required to resist slippage of the belt on the pulley. T2, slack side tension to resist slip, should be uh, considered to be that tension in the immediate vicinity of the drive pulley on the bottom strand. The historical method that SEMA provides to calculate T2, present, to, T2 to resist slip is TE times CW, where CW is the SEMA wrap factor for a rubber surfaced belt. The wrap factor can be as small as 0.08 for dual drive systems with rubber lagged drive pulleys and automatic take up and 420 degrees of wrap angle, or as large as 1.2 for a single drive system and unlagged pulley manual take up and 180 degrees of belt wrap. Now let's consider how to calculate minimum belt tension so as to prevent sag. Sag is a phenomenon which can occur in the point of minimum tension in the carrying strand of a conveyor belt. On an inclined conveyor it would be in the vicinity of the loading zone. The historical method provided by SEMA allows the, de allows the designer to select an appropriate percentage of sag between the carrying idlers so as to prevent lumps or material from coming out of the conveyor belt. 3%, 2%, 1.5% sag are the three values that SEMA provides and those percentages are based on material lump size the proportion of lumps versus fines, and the idler troughing angle. And note that T0, the minimum tension to prevent sag, may be, may be reduced if the belt is less than fully loaded. The three pertinent equations you can see are here. T0 for 3% sag, T0 for 2% sag, T0 for 1.5% sag, in which SI is idler spacing in feet, WB is the weight per foot of the belt, and WM is the weight per foot of the material. Once we have T0, we need to add or subtract the weight of the carrying and or return strand of the belt for a slope conveyor, and we have to add or subtract TYR, which is the tension required for the empty belt to overcome idler friction. Once we know the minimum belt tension to prevent sag, and we know the minimum belt tension to prevent slip, we select the larger of the two values. Once that value is selected, we can assume that the value is throughout the entire conveyor belt from the head all the way through the tail. It's uniformly distributed, let's say. Let's say in this example, we know that slack side tension needs to be 1,000 pounds. In the case of a counterweighted take-up, we know that the weight of the counterweight must be 2,000 pounds because the 2,000 pounds provided by gravity will be resisted with an equal and opposite force of 1,000 pounds in each of the two strands of conveyor belt. Now that we know what T2 is and where it is, we can calculate maximum tension in the belt. This, of course, is necessary to select a belt. T1 is the sum of TE and T2. And in the case of an inclined conveyor, T1 will occur in the immediate vicinity of the drive pulley, as shown in this picture. We hope you found this short tutorial useful. For more tips on conveyor design and maintenance, go to RomecaCorp.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much.